Hi, this is Regeline Sabat, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Renata Mazu. Renata Mazu is an intuitive mind architect. Welcome to the show, Renata. Well, hello, hello here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It is an honor to have you here today, Renata. Now, why don't you start off by telling us about you and where you are from? Okay, well, where I'm from, how much time do we have? (laughs) (laughs) We have time. I was born and raised in Lithuania. If anyone doesn't know, uh, it's a small country in Northeast Europe. So I moved here to the States over 20 years ago. uh, And I just followed my, what now is ex-husband. And just a bit of the story is my career has changed so much over the years. Uh, I was in travel, I was in real estate, I was consulting with state agencies. So from the outside, what seemed to be like a normal life, like ordinary life or even good, inside was quite a bit of a roller coaster. So um, I'm sure like most of you, and you including uh, Gigi, had like moments where nothing worked in your life. So I remember, there was a time in 2009, uh, we we're in doctor's office, my daughter's doctor's office, and I had a complete meltdown. There was nothing really happening. A doctor just asked some simple question, how was my daughter? And I just f- fled with tears. I was like, they were flowing, I couldn't stop. And it's just like, I can't help to do anything but just feel the worst person like mother, wife in the world. So. That was the time when nothing seems to work for me. And at that time, I have a great job. But at the same time, I feel miserable. It's like, it's not working for me. And I walk away from two businesses I had at the time. I was in real estate, travel. My marriage isn't working. I have a six-month-old baby on my hands 24-7. And then one of the major traumas that was 20 years ago, that I thought I dealt with, it just got re-triggered big time on the top of everything going on. So now on the top of that, my body starts breaking down to the point that I just cannot sit for more than like 10 minutes without excruciating pain. So that meltdown was just like a cherry on the top of everything. So at that moment, after that meltdown, I kind of realized that I literally like hit the rock bottom. And I, I, I can talk about this with a smile now, but at that time, it wasn't funny at all. So I kind of had like two options here. Either I'm going to bring myself somehow up and live, or I was going to give up literally to that point. So I kind of chose to figure out how I could make things work. And I started researching. I try to understand like what's wrong with me, nothing else but just me, how I could fix me and make me right. So I read every single book that I could find. I tried meditating, listening to other people's wisdom, like even podcasts like we're doing right now. I tried to learn tons of stuff. Like I learned modalities. I tried different modalities. Uh, I even got certified in some. So I tried to somehow rewire the brain through NLP. I tried that to psyche, tapping, seventh plane work. I mean, you name it. So I did tons of healing on myself, learned even new business strategies. Cause at that time I started my coaching business on the marketing side and I worked with coaches. I worked with other people just to fix me and just to grow the business and start moving forward. So the huge thing that I learned at that time was that there was really nothing wrong with me. What was wrong was my whole programming, everything that I acquired through life and just took as my own truth from whatever I observed, whatever experience, whatever I was taught. And those thoughts that were put in my mind that technically they were not mine. And today, one thing that I know for sure is that when you dig deep, when you heal yourself and release what's actually causing us to be stuck, whether it's life or business, which is what I call internal blocks. And when we do that work and clear those belief systems, and also I call that neutralizing the root causes, and we can talk about that if you'd like to dig in. But 
Then we have this new system in place that evokes like new sense of confidence, new sense of awareness and clarity around the purpose in general, whether it's in life or around the money and especially around the money because we then take actions that enable us to move forward towards what we want. And you can finally breathe again. New doors open, opportunities start coming in and even like growing businesses, you start making money that you never dreamed before about. So what I do now, it's kind of quite a bit of jump from where I was before. So I hope that it gives like a tiny bit of picture of who I am today. Yes, ma'am, it does. Now, Ursula here, she says, Renata is fantastic. Thank you for joining oh, us. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Yes, now Renata, tell us more about your main program, Remove Money Blocks. Oh boy, uh, where do I start? Um, remove Money Blocks. Well, this main program is six week program. And what we do there is we actually um, go through the whole spiel of the life, the whole aspects, all the aspects of life, whether it's experiences, observations, sometimes even smells and body senses. Uh, what we've seen in our own life, what we've seen in life, in our, in our environment, basically. And we create this blueprint where we see black and white where our gaps are. So we can actually look at that work. Usually it takes for us like four weeks because I walk everyone through that process. And people see black and white and automatically realize, okay, what's going on? What symptoms I see today? And by symptom, I mean, what behaviors I do that I don't like, uh, whether the, maybe there are some results that I don't like, or maybe lack of results. And they automatically connect the dots to what caused those symptoms to be present today and active. And then we can dig in and neutralize those root causes. And then when we neutralize things, there is no more, there are no more blocks on the road per se, and people are able to act, take action and do things just confidently and with no restrictions. So automatically they attract opportunities. You know, law of attraction, it's like attracts like. So if you lift up your energy and you're not sabotaging yourself anymore, you automatically attract some different stuff than you used to. So it's kind of everything kind of pulls into one place here. Yeah. Very powerful. The law of attraction truly matters. Now, tell us more about some of the projects you're currently working on. Well, this is my main gig, Remove Money Blocks program. I have also a Lock Wealth program that is bigger, the next step from that. Uh, what I do for the community, for people that are not familiar with my work, I actually have once or twice a month this free in, uh, Remove Internal Blocks um, Facebook event. Well, I should say Zoom event. It's posted on Facebook though. So I invite everyone just to join because sometimes it's hard to explain how you work. And whenever people come and experience that and they see the shift like in literally like 10, 15 minutes, they're like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> like, now I know what you're doing because otherwise I'm like, I had no idea. Thank you for sharing that. Now, Renata, tell us more about the most difficult challenge you faced in your life. Most difficult challenge is to break myself apart and start putting it back together. That was the, because that was the culmination of all the stuff that happened over the years. And that probably was the toughest thing to do because you have to face you. You have to face the naked you with all the good, bad, ugly, and all this fun stuff. So that was probably the hardest part besides from some traumas and some losses and um, just dealing with life. Yeah. Very powerful message. You have to face you. I love it. Now tell us more about your greatest accomplishment in your life. Oh boy. See, I'm probably humble there because I don't know if I had like some greatest accomplishment yet because I'm a baby. I'm always learning, you know? And it's like, um, People were telling me like, you graduated with masters like 4.0 and you were offered a job right away in the state. And I'm like, 
yes, these are great accomplishments, but probably the biggest one is for me to feel peace now, to just stand in my power now and to be able to speak the truth. And some people think I'm crazy because I choose my peace, you know? <laughs> but you know what? I've done tons of like many years of like settling and doing what people want me to do. And I'll, trust me, I was a pleasing queen probably, but there was a title. <laughs> So for me to now kind of step back and say, no, I don't want to do that. Or um, I choose my peace. That's probably my internal biggest accomplishment. I love that. Yeah, Peace truly matters. Now, Renata, what change do you wish to see in the world? Oh, boy. You know, I really want people to start looking at themselves and not from the perspective of what other people see them in them, but more from like who they truly are. And I remember I did a video a few days ago and I both shared on my uh, personal profile about looking into yourself and looking into with the eyes, okay, how can I change? What do I want to accomplish and why I'm not there yet? Because everyone's trying to find their purpose but you can't find a purpose. Purpose usually finds you when you break yourself apart and actually get to know who you really are. And whether it's emotional side, <clears throat> whether it's mental, whether it's physical, a lot of people forget the body that it stores the emotions. Get on that level and just really get to know yourself because only then you understand what that purpose is. So I really want people to be brave to look inside and i always commend my clients because and i say okay you are so brave for actually stepping forward and looking into yourself it's and you know that it's not that easy to do because you don't like a lot of stuff that you have because you acquired everything and i often ask like okay, okay do you know that you're not even thinking that it's not your thoughts that you're thinking someone else put them into you perception wise and it's just you have to realize what do you want to think what do you want to feel and actually go for it otherwise we'll be just flowing and not really accomplishing anything so i guess that would be biggest one that's right. You raise a great point in regards to individuals tending to put limiting beliefs on other individuals. So then they say, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. But once you start talking to yourself negatively and that negative self-talk, that's when you get negative results. So great yeah. in regards to that. And thank you for sharing that. Now, was there a time in your life journey where you experienced an aha moment, Renata? There were many aha moments. But the biggest probably was at that doctor's office. I'm like, there's something going on there that I need to change or otherwise it's not gonna end well. Um, another one probably when I realized that every person has trauma in their life, no matter if it's big or small, people are actually afraid to use that word but a word can be trauma and they're afraid to actually face it because they think they need to relive it in order to heal and that reminds me i don't know why but it just reminds me of uh, the person that i worked with uh last year he had an issue with alcohol and everyone tried to put a hat on him like you need to do this or that and i'm like you know what Let's find what's caused you in the first place to start going this route. So the aha moment was that there is always this root cause that's going to live in us unless it's neutralized. Some event, some memory that's going to be there unless it's neutralized to the point where we look at it as like a pen and it's like not bringing any emotions. So another point, the ha moment probably was when I couldn't sit for 10 minutes. 
every single surgeon told me that I needed a surgery, that I will not be able to get rid of the pain, that the only solution is surgeries, right? And I'm like, no, that is not gonna happen. <laughs> so what I did, that was the first time I got introduced to chiropractors. They put me back on feet, about 60%, but I still had this recurring pain. And somehow, I don't know if I got download or just found something that um, I started looking into the emotional side of that pain. And what I found was there was a lot of emotion that was stuck in a specific body part. And that's where I, that was through the learning process that I mentioned in the beginning. And I found that there's always an emotional component, especially to the chronic pain. So when I cleared my crap and when I healed certain things, I can do whatever I want today. And I don't have problems sitting or dancing or doing whatever, right? But that was the big aha moment because years ago, I probably could not have even thought, think about that, that as an option, as a possibility that, oh, emotions may cause pain, stress may cause pain. Everyone's talking about that, but no one's really experiencing or knows how to dissolve all that. Would that make sense? Yes, ma'am. It does make sense. Now, Lori Schoenfeld, she says, look into, yes, investigate. Always, always. Thank you, Lori. Always. Yes. Thank you for listening in, Lori. Yes. Now tell us more about what gives you happiness in your life, Renata. My dog, my daughter. <laughs> uh, small things will actually give happiness. Someone paying attention to you or saying thank you, uh, appreciating. It's like sometimes even a stranger smile gives happiness. There's really not particular thing. It's like when you stop for a moment and start smelling the roses and just be aware of your environment, as simple as that. People don't need huge things to make them happy because I'll tell you, I mean, I work with people who make seven figures. Are they happy? No. And sometimes I ask them, okay, why, do you, why did you choose to work with me? And they're like, I need to fix me. I need to get rid of whatever's not necessary. So money is never going to bring happiness because it's just a tool. Yes, it makes things easier. But whenever, let's say, people come to me, whenever they stuck with money or uh, they say I cannot make X amount of money or I freeze on sales calls or I do whatever, whatever's blocking me towards money, it's never about money. So I choose small things small things that around me and gratitude that's I know overstated but that's so powerful and you're smiling so you must agree with that <laughs> yes ma'am I do yes ma'am yeah. very powerful now Lori says here this is great I'm trying to dive more into this and I believe it's referring back to your statement look into yourself so the folks that are listening what are some steps that they can take in regards to looking into themselves? What are the first few steps that they can take? Okay. First of all, I want to know what the end result they wanna see. A lot of people have no clue what they want. They say, oh, I want a great life. What does that mean? What does that look like? What does that feel like? The moment we break it down into what we want into the senses, that's when we start knowing what we want. So number one, to know what you want. Then look at your patterns. It's as simple as that. You need to observe yourself and always say, observe yourself, <clears throat> excuse me, for like a week or two and see, okay, what do you don't like in your life? What type of behaviors you have that you want to change? Because I can guarantee there will be always something that, whether you say something, what we call stupid. Or, did you have any time like when you say, oh, when you say something and in the back of your mind, oh, I should not have said that. That was stupid. <laughs> we <laughs> always have these things. Or when someone says something to us, we, we feel like icky. So oh, observe what's going on and just pay attention to, okay, something's causing me to feel less than good. Make a note of it. 
I'm behaving a certain way, make a note of it. Now look at the triggers. What triggers you to act this way? So you know your thinking, your emotional, your behavior patterns. So that's how you can move forward by identifying, becoming aware in the first place, what's going on, and then go back, dig deep into the root causes. What's causing those things? Because I can guarantee there will be something causing. I had a guy, uh, a nice general coming last week to our group uh, call, and he was a little hesitant, to say the least. And he wanted to double the money, income, right? And he's like, Renan, I don't know what's going on. Help me figure it out. I'm like, okay. It appeared that he was constantly bringing one of the memories back. And he didn't need to say anything. I just guided him to a specific age. So he connected the dots like instantly. That's what people's mind do. Uh, so it appeared that there was huge responsibility, huge guilt and fear of loss of bringing in more money. So when you connect the dots, when you know your patterns, what you don't like, you can always go back to the root cause, get there and neutralize the memory that's associated with what you see in your life. Just please do not start changing the behavior first. Because <laughs> a lot of times people will start changing, start with changing their behavior. And that's the opposite, usually my two cents, of course with what needs to be done. Because it's like if you have a drinking problem and you force yourself not to drink, your system is going to resist so much because it's coping with something. It's trying to protect you from something. It's trying to keep you safe. Even if you don't understand that safety, it's keeping you safe because it thinks that this is the way to deal with that. So instead of changing behavior, look where that behavior stems from and neutralize that cause, neutralize that memory. That behavior is going to start automatically fall into place that you want. So that's a short version. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. Now, Renata, you and I spoke a lot about the mindset and a resilient mm -hmm. mindset, in fact. Now, can you tell the audience more about how important it is to maintain a resilient mindset rather than just a positive mindset? You know my opinion on that. Like, <laughs> the audience does it. <laughs> I, don't believe, I don't really believe in keeping yourself positive, like in terms of, okay, today I'm going to be positive and I'm going to do everything positive and I'm going to start saying positive affirmations and nothing else. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work because no matter how much you say or think or attempt doing things in a positive way, it's not going to work if your system is going to drag you back downstairs, you know? So it's like the same thing. Like if you remember, like I'm sure everyone's gone to a seminar or a lecture or whatever. And when you get pumped up this energy and you're so excited, you're ready to rock and roll and just, just move the mountains, right? What happens two weeks later? What happens a month later? You same go back thing. into the same old crap or in the same old pattern, what I call a pattern, right? So positivity, it's good, but it has to stem from within. Again, goes back to what's causing you not to be positive. So I would rather you figure out how to, what makes you smile what makes just be joyful and happy in like real reality and just shift your focus little by little onto those things instead of forcing yourself to do those affirmations nothing's going to sink in into your system unless it, there's a buy-in from the subconscious mind and it's not always easy to do so. And if you repeat long enough, it's 50-50 chance if it's going to be set as a new program or not. So positivity, I take it with a salt or grain a little because it has to be coming from within and it has to be in the flow rather than forced and pushed onto you, if that makes sense. 
Yes, ma'am. It does. Now, Lori says, I love this. The positive mindset versus the resilient mindset. Yes. So good. Oh, thank you, Lori. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lori. Yes. Now you mentioned to smile. How, how important does smiling affect the health as well? In an individual? Oh, well I'm not a medical person, but, um, <laughs> You know, I've done one of those smiling uh, techniques as well. And there is research actually done on that. If you smile, and I fail to remember the exact amount of time, I think from 30 seconds to a minute, if you force yourself to smile, <laughs> there is chemicals actually producing in your body that lift you up. So I've done that. <laughs> try that. If nothing else, try that because... See, the thing is, the conscious mind doesn't understand between reality and like what's real, what's not real, okay? The only difference is you can put anything into your subconscious mind if you have thought, if you have emotion attached, and you feel that emotion in your physical body, then there is no difference. So if you can smile and at least imagine how happy you are or how that smile feels, or just have a memory come back to you, like when it was a really good time and that evoked that smile. Have you ever heard about um, victory poses? Yes, now tell us more about it though, for okay. the audience. Okay, so, and I, I was teaching that in my class because obviously not everyone, not everyone <laughs> knows about that. Okay, let's do an experiment. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so, okay, uh, in, remember something that didn't, you didn't succeed at. Okay. And where you kind of failed and it was like not so good emotion. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. Can you close your eyes for a second? Yes. Everyone. Okay. Just sink into that memory just for a little second. Okay. And I want you to kind of feel the way you felt and have your body the way you had, whether you were standing or sitting. And just kind of allow your body to guide you into that sensation. Everyone, let's take a moment to do that now. Yeah. And everyone else, please do that. <laughs> yes. So, and now observe how your body is at that moment. Okay. Now, flip it to some different memory where you actually were successful, really, really successful. What's what you nailed something. I don't care if that you cooked a great meal or you just had a speech or whatever else. And I want you to do the same, sink into that memory and allow your body to guide you. Feel like you fell before, stand like you stand or sat at that moment and just sink yeah. into that good feeling. Wow. There's a difference in how your body is, right? Yes, ma'am. Now, if you go back to the first memory really quickly, if you go back there, and if you're holding that memory, if you try to change your body posture itself and alone posture, the bad feeling is going to disappear. It just is easy as that. You can shift your emotional state in literally seconds. I even taught like, we had a victory pose. If you hold that for a minute or two, like a victory pose, you know, <laughs> literally before any meeting and i was teaching home depot people that as well they were shocked i'm like really that works i'm like try that <laughs> so if you hold for a minute or two your body is actually bringing totally different emotions and bringing you to different emotional states so try that wow yes. because that's that. powerful that's yeah. powerful because your body is transmuting you to different states so yes, that's my like very powerful. Thank you. Now, what is your best advice for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness to the audience, Renata? My best advice. Hmm. You know, I talked about knowing what you want, like figuring out what you want. I would say learn to detach from goals. Learn to detach from goals because that's what stops us and blocks us most because we're so getting attached to the goals that we set that we forget the actual process. 
we forget the steps that we need to take. We forget to enjoy those steps. And I had numerous examples where people like were tr really stressing out about something, whether a client is not signing up or not responding or the house is not selling. I had one lady sold the house in literally a couple hours, like after she put the phone down and just walked away. And then she came back, the phone was blown with an offer that was six figure profit and all this fun stuff. Detach from the goals, you set the goal. You create a plan. You create action steps. You go and do stuff, right? And you have that goal that you're working towards. So put that goal aside. You know that what you want, right? So go ahead and start taking those actions. And especially start listening, learn to listen in the first place to that intuitive side of yours. Because that side will guide you. The only thing you need is to trust it. A lot of people don't trust that. So there are multiple steps, I guess, but trust your intuition. Go do what you need to do. And if there is something in your way, just be brave to look into it. That even sometimes not pleasant thing or whatever happened and just work on that. There's always someone who can help you do that. So be brave on that and let the goals leave alone, leave them alone. <laughs> you don't need to poke them. You know, I, I remember one of my mentors, she would call that poking. It's like, going to men and just poking the man in the garage. It's like, whenever you ask a man to do something, right? Usually a woman's job, most of the time is like, are you done, honey? Have you finished, honey? Or whatever else, right? And the man is like, leave, woman, leave me alone, right? <laughs> I'm, I got it, I'm gonna do it. So it's like going to those goals is like poking a man and going to his garage and it's like, are you done, honey? <laughs> is it ready yet? So I always kind of remember that example about the goal. So it's kind of leave it alone. <laughs> Very powerful. Now, how important is, is commitment? Oh. Okay. So if we have a job and if we have to be at eight o'clock every day, and if we're not there, what's going to happen? We're going to get fired. Most likely. Right. So the same as with anything, it's like you want to grow a business, you want to make money because money is going to help you do whatever, feel whatever you want. You need to be committed to those steps, to those actions. And that's one of the major reasons why people not seeing the results that they want. They can have the clear path the clearest path with no, or at least with minor blocks. I don't know if there is a possible way just to have nothing blocking you at all, but no major stuff, right? But if you're not doing what you got to do, it's not going to happen. It's like you, you and I, we have an interview, right? If I don't show up, what's going to happen? Nothing. So if people are expecting the results and they are not consistent and committed to what they're supposed to do. And there's a possibility that there is a self-sabotage going on because something is causing them to avoid things or to prevent some type of even perceived threat or pain. So that's another story. But commitment, consistency is like, it's a must. Otherwise, we're going to see the same results or lack of them like before, right? So I say yes. We cannot go without them. I love it. Show up for yourself. Yeah. Your commitment. Very powerful. Now, Renata, thank you so much for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. I appreciate you. Now, where can the audience find you? Mostly anywhere on social media. And if they type in my name, Renata Mazu or Edge Savvy they kind of pull my profile up. So mostly on Facebook and Instagram, some on LinkedIn. I'm getting better to get there more. <laughs> but uh, yeah. 
I love or, it. Or my website. Yes, you just put it up. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Renata at RenataMazu.com. That's R-E-N-A-T-A-M-A-Z-U.com. And Renata, again, thank you so much for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I always yeah. love chatting with you. Likewise. Have a blessed day. Thank you. You too.